2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. You see, God's work is in your heart. What God is looking at is your heart. I want to mention to you a statement that I heard from the man of God, Pastor Chris, many years ago, which changed my life. He said, the microphone of heaven is on your heart, not your mouth. Book of Matthew, chapter 15, from verse 7. He said, ye hypocrites, well, did a science prophesy of you saying, this people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth. Ever seen people professing some kind of devotion to God? This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. So with their mouth, so I'm a Christian, I love God, may I go to church. This is who draw nigh unto me with their mouth and orange with their lips. But he says their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship. Okay, look at this. In vain means nothing. Zero. In vain do they worship me. So the guy is worshiping or the guy is showing some form of devotion to God. He says, God says in vain. Why? Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. I'll read this in the Passion Translation from verse 7 in the Passion Translation. It's a fraud and hypocrites. Isaiah described it perfectly when he said, These people honor me only with their words, for their hearts are so very distant from me. They pretend to worship me, but their worship is nothing more than the empty traditions of men. These people honoring me, they said, In vain do they worship me. He said, And they teach for doctrines. What's doctrine? Something to believe. So he said, The things they believe were taught them by the rudiments of men. First Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Likewise see wives being subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversations coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting your apparel but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Everyone has hidden man of the heart. So even though he's addressing the wives the truth is beyond that. So go back to verse 3 you see that. So I can I can just paraphrase verse 3 and just exchange a few things. Context is still uh, proper. Whose adorning or whose beauty who's making it in life let it not be the outward making it in life of buying of cars and of building of houses when you look at your life what do you think is great about your life what do you think is valuable about your life verse 4 but let it be when you look at your life god is not looking at your life with your cars with your houses with the money you have god is not looking at it like that but let it be of the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible why because the house is corruptible the car is corruptible you know you see a certain mystery in life people will work all their lives to get money and then when they get money they will use all that money to solve things that the devil will now bring so when you look at the your life what do you do you look at your life the greatness of your life from what is going on inside you are you growing are you walking more in love are you becoming more and more humble is something happening to your spirit are you becoming a better person but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible so god's work inside you is not corruptible god's work inside you does not fade it does not end he cannot destroy it you can take everything away from me but you can't take what's in my spirit so if you're not building your spirit everything you have is still corruptible the devil can come and take everything and try him said what is his value it's like paper it's nothing but then everything is taken away from you you know you're going to produce everything again you know the quality of your spirit. there's something about you nobody can put you down that's why you need to be putting the word of god inside you you wake up in the morning you are talking i have all grace you have to provoke that grace because god is able to make all grace abound towards you every season every season every season every season every season every season I'm blessed. Are you blessed? I'm so convinced about that. I'm so convinced about that. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Today I was blasting somebody. It was a good conversation anyway. But she collected it. I saw that she had posted a wish list for her birthday. I know I'm, I'm, I, it's like some people now feel almost attacked. I'm coming. <laughs> she had posted a wish list for her birthday. And with this wish list, she was not posting to people she knows. You're putting it on your social media, you are begging. Baking. So I asked her a question. I said, Can your friends afford this wish list? 
She said, some. And I said, hold on a minute. Your friends or guys who like you? She's, she's my daughter, so she, she, she took the blows fine. And she said, Sir, honestly, guys who like me, I said, You are begging. That's not how blessed men move. Abraham said, I will not take a, a thing from you lest you say you made Abraham rich. There's a way blessed men think. If God cannot give it to us, we don't need it. If I have a wish list, there are, some, there are people I will send it to. My family. My family, my family, what are they doing? <laughs> That's why they are my family. If they cannot afford it, then we try again next year. Blessed men don't beg. Listen to me. I said, blessed men don't beg. I'm going to write a wish list. Bible says that be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything, including your birthday wish list. It said through prayer and supplication. It said, let your requests be made known unto God, not unto guys who like you. I just slap some people from their back because that is their source of income. Bed day is time to cash out. And if they are unable to cash out, everyone is wicked. Fake friends. It's like I came ready to blow people. You are blessed. Amen. I see. And you don't need anybody to give you anything to make you more blessed. Carry your techno with pride. Matakola bakasaya. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm full of joy. Are you full of joy? Yeah. Sit down for a moment. Thank you, choir. You may be seated. So I, I, I should finish this message in 45 minutes. But I've been doing it. I don't know why you guys are looking at me. I told someone when we were doing the foundation school graduation, I told someone I, I was going to finish the message, sorry, the whole graduation by in 30 minutes. A person texted me after we took about an hour plus. That pastor, please, you said 30 minutes. I said, me, I preach short. I don't know about the rest. <laughs> because my, my preaching was like 13 minutes. I tried for y'all. So a big blow landed to the wish list gang. Don't beg. Bless men, don't beg. Abraham is with Lot. Lot says, I'm going to the other side. He said, fine. Fine. Go there. Say, what do you want me to take? You want me to take this place? Fine. Because there's something about blessed men. We are different. We don't beg. Did you hear me? Do you beg? Don't beg. Don't beg. Do you know whom united? You don't know whom united? People that when you ask, how are you doing? Hmm. They are whom united. United association of hmm. Every day something is wrong. Every day, their brother has swallowed a baobab tree. 
Anyway, part 13 of In the Sight of God. If you thought I was done, I will not, I'm not done. I'm not done. You know, so many messages I've been getting from around the world, the lives of many people have been changed by this message. I was telling some people that, I think it was yesterday I was having a meeting with the pastors, and I said, take for example the, the football match we went to play. You know, some uh, understand football very well, and some of, the, some of our sisters were getting acquainted with it. But at least even if you don't understand anything, you know that there are two goal posts on the left and the right, and if the ball enters, it's a goal. So some are happy if it enters this one, go. It enters that one, go. They don't support anything. All they are waiting for is for it to enter, go. Then there's another pathetic community that when somebody hits the ball into the air, boom, I say, ah! All right. Now, in a football match like that, you know that the goal is clearly defined. You know that when it gets into this part, it is a goal. No matter how close you were to it, if it didn't get in, it was not a goal. So in the match, there's this focus that we want to achieve this goal. Now, same in the kingdom, if you don't understand what is a goal in the kingdom, and that's the reason why this message is so important. If you don't know what is a goal in this kingdom, you will walk around many things thinking you are doing things that please God and you don't, what you are doing does not please God. If the moment we get on a pitch, we say, from today or for this game, hitting the ball to hit the post is a goal. Everything changes. Technique changes. Focus changes. Everything changes. What we would have called a goal before is no longer a goal. So you see, understanding that your walk with God has a lot to do with what is termed as a goal. Or what is termed as successful, what is termed as good, what is termed as great, what is termed as accepted and pleasing to God is what matters. That's what counts. Let's, let's see a verse of scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'll start reading from verse number 11. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, those who know the Bible very well, you know that Paul talked a lot about marriage and he was doing a lot of talking about marriage, all right? And um, how the churches should live in those times concerning marriage. Um, but... But and if she departs, talking about the, the woman who's married, he says, let her remain unmarried. Talking about that's, that's divorce. He said, or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. Okay, context, for, for the sake of context, he's talking about a woman who was probably with a man, married, and then she gets born again. So Paul is giving them um, rules on how to live Concerning that, he says, in this case, if she decides to leave that husband, she should remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. That means she can decide to, to still marry that husband and let not the husband put away his wife. That means a man too who has married a woman and that man is now born again. He says, she should not put away his wife. All right, so let's keep reading. There's something I want to show you there. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Keep going. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. I think that's English. You understand it. All right. Next one. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God had called us to peace. That means you can decide to depart or not depart. But it says, choose the option of peace. All right? But it says, God has called us to peace. So very, very important things 
He's saying over there. Let's go. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Keep going. But as God, now this, this is the part I want to bring to your, your mind. He said, but as God hath distributed to every man as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. He says, now, the context is clear, but it can be brought in to, so we understand in other things. He says, as God had distributed to every man. Okay, what has God distributed to every man? There's a part of life that God has distributed to you. He says, as the Lord had called everyone, so let him walk. Next verse. Is any man called, now this is the, the part I want you to see, is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Okay, now, he says, if the person is called circumcised. Now today we might not have this issue, but then it's applicable in other issues. So let's say, for example, you know, because we judge things by what we can see, what we can touch, and what we can feel, we think something is successful when we can um, grade it by our mode of grading, by our matrix of grading. For example, some people think a pastor is, pop is, is successful when he's popular. So then, yesterday I was telling the pastors, I said, so it creates something like a pyramid system like a Ponzi scheme. So then, everyone is looking at the pastor, all right, and if they hear that this pastor prayed 12 hours 10 years ago, and that's how he's, the way he is, they go to pray 12 hours thinking that is what will get them to be exactly where the pastor is. But the fact that the person is popular doesn't mean the person is successful. Why? Why do you think he's successful? Because how you rate things is popular, trending, famous, known. You know, I don't know if any of you ever encountered this, but there was a certain time in the body of Christ where you had a lot of uh, pastors in, in their preaching to tell you that they are doing something right. They tell you, you know, I have three cars. You know, I have a house. I don't know if you ever encountered anything like that but I did I saw, I saw that so the, the pastor was telling you about how many cars he has and how many houses that he has and they were by the grace of God and that's just religious cliche so then everybody in the congregation is going to measure their success in life by that matrix so if they don't have two cars that means they are not successful and God did not hear their prayer and God does not love them that's a wrong way to look at it So I give them an analogy. I said, take for example, Michelle, that I sent to pastor in Kaswa. Michelle is pastoring in Kaswa. Gospel. I gave him international church. He streams his service from Canada. Does it mean gospel? Does it make gospel more successful than Michelle? No. You are reading it wrongly, and that's why everybody wants to travel now. Because when they travel, the first thing is they need to take a picture quickly and upload it, <laughs> so that all their enemies will see that the Lord is good and His mercy endureth forever. You're wrong. The pastor in the city is as important to God as the pastor in the village. The pastor in the village is as called as the pastor in the city. There are pastors of 15, of 50, of 100 in some village you don't know. God's eyes are also over them. I read a story of a guy who said he went to a place in Niger, Anguara State or something. He said he thought that he was going to be, you know, he's going to be a missionary in Niger. 
So he was praying and fasting and he went, when he got there, he found a whole community of Christians. Now Niger is touted as a Muslim nation. He saw a whole community of Christians. They were even going for a three-day retreat. They might not know systematic theology like you. They might not know everything. They might not know eternal life. They might not know everything. All the things you learn in foundation school, they might not know everything, but they love the Lord. It's okay for now. God sees that. It's as important to God as the guy who is in a church with lights and smoke. <laughs> because if I don't correct this in your mind, if God ever sends you anywhere and you think God sent you to a village, you would think God is punishing you. But God uses fame as much as he uses obscurity. As God, he said, go back there. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Is anyone called to Kaswa? Let him be in Kaswa. Is anyone called to international church? Let him be in international church. When I started pastoring, you know, I had some friends who were pastoring, selling churches, right? And I mean, I don't, at that time, if now the whole youth church system started from us, started from me, so there was nothing like that. So, two quick stories. One of my friends who was sent to pastor a church. He said, ah, they, they are passing the churches. We, they, we are going to little, little children. He told us that we are, we, we are going to little children. Another story, another, another pastor was with some of his leaders. And one of the leaders said, ah, and at that time we had just started. But the leader was like, ah, but some, there's something that Pastor Enoch is doing. And that time we were really few. And we're, he was shut down quickly. So, sorry, no. If you don't understand, tree, I, I'm trying to say, the church of little, little children. Now, the one who was called to a certain church has some grown people there, has some man and his wife, so he, well, it's, it's part of his bragging rights though, in my church, you know, there are couples. Hey! <laughs> and me, I have my church singles. I was unflinching. I just did what God asked me to do. Everything they had and more. I got it while focusing on what God called me to do. He said, the one who is circumcised, is anyone called being circumcised? Let him become uncircumcised. Let him not become uncircumcised. Is anyone called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. When, when, we, when I prophesy, maybe in church, I say, you're going to get international contracts. Why? You see, you have, to you, have to, you have to answer, why? Why are you going to get international contracts? If everything does not point back to the kingdom, it's a failure. It's a failure. Oh, Christians need to enter into places of power because if Christians enter into places of power, do you know how many Christians are there? But they don't speak for God. Whatever they are doing there is not connected to God. And God knows how to handle those things. Is it eight years? You will come out. You will come out. And life will come back. You will come back to valuing people and valuing relationships and seeing God. The zenith of some people's dream is to be the president of Ghana. You can't be president of Ghana past eight years. So the zen your dream can only be lived for eight years. I was explaining something to, 
I think on Sunday I started talking about it. I said, the reason why some of you don't even, you know, if not yet, come to see the truth and essence of the Christ that lives in you is that you see, life is like a journey. Let me explain. Come. Come. You stand here for me. In life, everyone is at this point. And at this point, why are we going to school? Why do we, are we looking for jobs? Why are we looking for money? Because when we get money, we realize we're not looking for money. When we get houses, we realize we could not sleep in all of them. When we get the dream job, we realize we're not looking for that. Why? Because the desire is still insatiable. The, the reason why we are quaking is because we are looking for something. So, if the person does not marry, the person thinks, the reason why I'm unhappy is because I'm not married. When he gets married, the reason why I'm unhappy is because I don't have a child. When he gets a child, then they're looking for what? What are they looking for? So, throughout their life, they are looking for something. They're looking for something. At the end of their lives, at the end of their lives, they come to one conclusion. Especially for those who receive Christ. They come to a conclusion that they were looking for Christ. And they were looking for peace. They were looking for the sense of satisfaction and peace that only Christ gives. When they get to that point, it's too late. It's too late. Why am, I, why am I saying it's too late? Because they receive Christ at that point. But there's still something missing. So I'll explain. When you gave your life to Christ, Christ is supposed to be enough. You know why you think Christ is not enough? Because you, we can't believe that what men have lived all their life for is what we got at the beginning. Go to the book of Matthew. Very popular scripture, Matthew 11. Verse 27. All things are delivered unto me by my Father. No man knoweth the Son by the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, you see. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So what are we looking for? Rest. Rest is not sleep. Rest is that place of peace. It's that place. It's like a, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee, not water. So the deer gets to the water and he drinks the water. Oh, Jesus told the woman at the well. The woman said, I'll give you water. I said, no, I have water that you will drink and never thirst again. That's rest. I don't have to search again. No, we get born again and this rest comes into our heart. When you are not trained in the things of God to recognize that this is what they are all looking for. You also start with your rest. Start searching. Now, Jesus said something. When you receive 
this rest, this Christ in your heart. Something is supposed to happen. So you look at verse 29. Now remember, go, go back to verse 28. Come on to me. I'm showing you the purpose of life. I'm showing you, I'm defining life for you. Why is it that the biggest, some of the biggest footballers who made it to the highest level, they quit playing football, they become pastors. Why? Because life is more than fame. You will not understand it if you are looking to go to that place. But those who have been there and have come back, you can ask Solomon. He will tell you, no matter the number of girlfriends you have, he will tell you that that's not what you are looking for. One day I remember when we were very young, a politician, it was a woman, she said, she, in politics, if she gets one million dollars, she's quitting politics. You see, there's this idea that makes people think, if I get this asset, but it, it is never given to anything to be your peace. So, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, is I'll give you rest. Then he gives you rest. Now, this guy and this guy are actually the same. This is Christ. This is Christ. This is Christ at the beginning. This is Christ at the end. So something happens. So I came. I received Christ. He came into my heart. I received rest. Then he goes to the next verse to say, look at it. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest. Come on, I thought he gave me rest in verse 22, 28. No, are you here or you have gone home? Yes. I thought he gave me rest in verse 28. He said, I will still find rest. Why? Because when I receive him and I have rest, I start walking with him to find rest. So then, what is life? Finding Christ and living with him. Finding Christ and living for him. Finding Christ and walking with him. That's life. Go back to your seat. You are not looking for money. You are looking for Christ. Do you know, do you know the peace that you enjoy in Christ? The peace. Sometimes when you listen to some people's story, you wonder, whoa. Ah. You wonder how they turned out. Something small hit them. And they wallowed in, in, in depression, wallowed in, in hopelessness. What is it like to live without God? What is it like to live without God's purpose in your life? What's it like? When I found Christ and I walked with him, everything was enough. My techno was enough. Where I lived was enough. If you found Christ and you are still looking for something, let me tell you what, your eyes are not on him. I told some leaders last week, I said, what people don't know is that I really wanted to preach in villages. That's what I wanted to do. As we are speaking here, there's one elder in one village somewhere who's preaching without light. I am not more important to God than him. I was only called for what I'm doing. Because if everybody goes to the village, who will think about the city? So God too has people in the city. And so the people that God has in the city, God gives them more grace and resources so they can also reach the people in the village. 
But then when they think all the resources that come to them is because God has blessed them so that they can be comfortable and lavish, they've lost it. They've missed the reason why God gives them money. If it is not tied to the kingdom, it does not read on heaven's radar. Okay, go back to that verse. The one who circumcised. I said, no, First Corinthians 7. He said, the one who circumcised, the one who's called to be circumcised, you know, look at looking at becoming uncircumcised. If any man called to be a preacher, let him not go and look for something else. Is anyone who's called to be a helper of the preacher, let him not go look for something else. Because you see, sometimes people will be looking at the preacher and they say, I'm inspired. That inspired is, I would like to remove him. Mm. Have you ever heard people say, I'm living my dream? To be frank with you, I'm not living my dream. I'm living God's dream for my life. To be frank with you. My dream was something else. But you see, I find rest in this one. So it can be tough, but there's rest. There's rest. Is any man called being, being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Next verse. He said, circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. Come on. By the keeping of the commandment of God. Now, the, the, the word about the keeping of the commandments of God means by the keeping of the word of God. That means the obedience of what God said. So, Kaswa is nothing. International church is nothing. By the keeping of the word of God. That means what, what did God ask you to go to? That's what is something. That's what's Something. Where did God ask you to go? That's what is something. I sent Brown to Cape Coast. That's what's something. And I don't know if you have ever experienced it. I don't know if you have ever experienced it. But when you go to where God sent you, it's like there's some peaceful atmosphere there that cannot be explained. There's some, there's some peaceful atmosphere there. It's like when you get there, like, ah. anytime I, I come into this country, no matter where I travel to, when I get to Kotoka, ah, finally, I'm back where God put me. I don't seek to be in another country. I'm okay where God put me. No matter what I say, there are some people, German in India, they have to go. <laughs> it's like uh, those who want to marry. If you like, let 10 people divorce today. They will go and marry. You see, people don't look at things the way God does. God looks at the heart. Why does God look at the heart? I was telling the leaders yesterday. I said, why does God look at the heart? Because if it was you, you would do the same thing if you had information on people's heart. How many of you ever were told to kneel down in school, but you know in your heart you were not kneeling down? <laughs> Let me see your hand. How many of you have given a gift to somebody, but in your heart you were not giving it? So if somebody were giving you something and you had a way of seeing the person's heart, wouldn't you look? <laughs> wouldn't you look? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be more important to you than the gift? So you see why God looks at the heart. See why God looks at the heart. Wait, I wonder, those who don't have the Holy Spirit, what do they do in life? When I, when 
when I see and I chance on relationship advice online, I'm scared for people. I'm scared for people. What will you do without the Holy Ghost? Oh, I want a man who's romantic. You know I've said it already. I want a man who's romantic. Kalista Pradila. You see, when people talk about things like this, they never factor demons in. They never factor demons in. That's why, especially <laughs> sisters, I've come again. <laughs> sisters, let me tell you, any friendship, conversation, you know that will implicate you emotionally, don't go far. Don't go far. Yes, because the way you are made is that if you allow the person into your ear gates, he's getting somewhere. In the beginning, you were talking to him, you don't like him. You don't like him. Don't, listen, this thing I'm telling you, don't lie to yourself that you are not part. <laughs> I know ladies who told themselves by force they will marry tall guys who ended up with short men. By the time they ended up with a short man, they were like, you know, you know, he's a kind person, he's a caring person. But before, they said, no, never, never. Why? Because when you allow people into your ear gates, okay, Proverbs 4. Yes, sir, yes, sir, let's go there, sir. Proverbs 4. Verse 23, it's a scripture you all know. <laughs> Keep thy heart with all diligence. Now, now, we mention this scripture, but we forget the diligence. Do you, do you, know, do you understand diligence? Diligence. When you say somebody is diligent, it means hard working. That means you keep your heart with hard work. Hard work. As you are talking to the person, talking to the person, you know the conversation, your heart is entering the hard work. Cut. You have to be, you see, people mount, they, 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 they get to the house, they lock their gates, lock their door, lock everything and they go to sleep and they leave their heart open. They've locked their house but their heart is not locked. This is where you should be locking first. Why? Because out of it are the issues of life. Everything from life will spring from your heart. The Bible never lied. So once you start a conversation, you are talking, you are talking, you are talking. You see that this talking is going somewhere. Don't enjoy it. Use hard work to guard your heart. Because how do things enter into your heart? Through your ear gates, your eye gates. You are talking. You are talking to him. You are talking to him. Your heart. Now, you are breaking emotionally. You are breaking. You told yourself that you only date muscular guys. Now, this guy, looking like a broom. He's talking to you. You are breaking it. You are breaking. You are breaking. You are breaking. You see, life is not about muscles. <laughs> New theories start emerging. Because every girl says they like tall guys. Who marries the short people? No, nobody is short. Who marries the semi tall people? Who marries them? They marry. No, there are girls who are like, no. Life is not like that. You don't allow people into your heart if you have no plans. Oh, he's a romantic guy. 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 <laughs> then someone will be looking at, he has money, he has money, he has money, he has money. See, carnality. You're a child of God. He has money. If you want to marry anybody, eh? Before we come to maybe somebody, the, 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 the Lord specifically pick for you. Before we come to that topic, first of all, first thing that you have to take is, does he fear God? Mm. Does he fear God? Or God fears him? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Look beyond the things you are seeing. 
Because if he does not fear God, the day demons enter him, he won't be able to tell. If I tell you stories, if I tell you stories, oh, pastor, he fears God, but he doesn't go to church. He does not fear God. The one who fears God will go to church. What if he's in church and he does not fear God? Of course, there are people who are in church who don't fear God. But anyone who fears God will go to church. Why? Let me tell you the mystery. You are not enough. You are not, I'm telling you now, you are not enough for a person to say because of you, I won't do the wrong thing. You are not enough. You see, you wish you were enough for that. You see, why do people step out of... Because he did it on me. Because he did this to me. I hope me. Everything, <laughs> Everything is about me. In me. Meanwhile, when the instructions were being given to husband and wife, Christ was there in the statement. He said, husbands, love your wife. Ask unto the Lord. Why? Because if you don't include that, he doesn't have any way to mark it. So, the day he is not on good terms with you, if he fears the Lord, he will look at the Lord and treat you well. Joseph said, but I fear God. He told Potiphar's wife, he said, I fear God. He said, you there, you are a fine woman, but I fear God. <laughs> if I get out, go. <laughs> fear God. You hear some, some things some couples do to their, their husband. You wonder that. Well, okay, why do we do. Why, why do they say the vows in front of God? Why do they say in church? Why? Because both of them are supposed to fear God. I tell people, I say, when Adam was in the garden alone, did you ever hear that the devil came to him? The moment the woman came, the moment marriage is instituted, the devil comes around. That's why people don't know. So in their relationship, everything was fine. They had a relationship for five years. One year into marriage, he cast. You wonder, but it's the same thing. The relationship and the marriage, it's, it's not the same thing. The moment covenant comes into play, the devil comes around. Because God is in the picture now. Why? On the day of the wedding, they told you what God has joined together. So the devil knows. The devil does not go anything that God does not have interest in. People don't understand. They, they don't factor the devil into these kind of things. Whoever knew that Saul will become possessed by a devil? Whoever knew? Nobody ever knew. The good guy all of a sudden had a devil. To the extent that he nearly killed his own son. The good guy, that nice man. All of a sudden, his head turned. That's how the girl, the, the woman was, was with the husband in the house. First two years, he's a nice man. He's a nice man. He's a good guy. He, he, he ties my shoe. He, when I'm coming in the house, he doesn't even allow me to step on the ground. So, when I'm coming to step on the ground, you hold my legs. Ah, my baby, don't step on the ground. He takes me for manicure and pedicure. And he sits there. What a romantic man. For two years. After two years, one day he was lying down. And the devil came. <laughs> Entered him like this. He started looking at his wife. <sighs> so I'm stuck with this woman for life. I cannot go anywhere. Before, when the woman snores, he, he just loves it. He even adds beats to it. When the woman says, Mm-mm. Then he like, then you wake up, baby. You're snoring so beautiful. Oh, baby, for two years. Now the same snoring, no. Bushwoman. What I should do in my house. Ah, then the woman who didn't know that time. Ah, she came out. Ah, she removed her wigs. Ah! Problem has started. And they don't know it's coming from the devil. The devil has caused him to see something wrongly. See, I'm talking about the fear of God. 
Talking about the fear of God. Okay, let's look at Daniel chapter 5. Boy, 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 my time is almost up. Daniel chapter 5. They thought I was not serious. That was close. <laughs> Daniel chapter 5. This uh, scriptures guy is like. You, 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 uh, <clears throat> The fear of God. The Bible says that is the source of wisdom. Any wisdom that's not coming from the fear of God is devilish wisdom. Your heart, your heart, your heart, your heart. The person got married. The next thing, all her other friends who have failed marriages will be advising her. Don't allow your husband to talk to anyone. Stand up for yourself. Men like to dominate women. Stand up for your right. You are a woman. Be yourself. If he says A, you say B, don't let anybody push you down. You know, I see this thing about women a lot, and it is so pathetic. Let me tell you that thing. You see, it's like they feel inferior. So, sometimes when you see them trying to, they are, they are trying to level up and say, I'm not an inferior, I'm a, even though I'm a woman, I'm some, you see it a lot with driving. When you ask man for space, man will give you space. You ask man for space, it's like you're trying to show me that I cannot drive, I can't drive, I can't drive. Let your confidence come from the word of God. Be confident that you are a Christian. You see, you can walk in love. You don't have to feel inferior. Someone asks you for space. If you can give him the space, tell him, please come. It doesn't make you inferior. If your confidence does not come from the word of God, that's when you'll be doing things like this. It's like nobody's putting you down, but you're already saying, yeah, all those who are pushing us down. I've seen those saying, all my haters. Nobody hates you, guy. Everybody's looking for what to eat. Nobody's hating on you. Huh? When they hate, it gives me more energy. <laughs> Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Now, Nebuchadnezzar has passed. Um, Darius. Then in... Babylonian history, Belshazzar appears. But in the history books, there was a king that appeared before Belshazzar. So it's supposed to be Nabonidus. But I think Nabonidus went, he was out of Babylon for a while. So Belshazzar was sitting in for him. So Belshazzar was the king at this time. Now, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Now, this king, remember, God has dealt with Nebuchadnezzar. Darius supported Daniel, so he was cool. But Belshazzar has come on the scene and he does something very crazy. He does something very crazy. Keep, go, go, keep going. Verse 2. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Belshazzar! Even Nebuchadnezzar who captured these things did not drink in them. So you can see Nebuchadnezzar kind of feared God. He was doing some wrong things, but he kind of feared God. He went to take, when they captured them from, from Israel, they took these things from their temple and brought it to. Many generations have passed. Nobody touched this thing because they kind of know that these people, their God is something. But Shadrach comes on the scene and says, nothing. Bring it out. We'll drink today. Come on, look at it. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king himself, his princes, his wives, and girlfriends might drink in the cup, which is the cup in the temple of the Lord. He had no fear of God. Continue. 
Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine. Then what? Then praise the gods of gold. Can I put it in today's language for you? The guy does not fear God. Everything that comes to him from God, he says, ah, so uh, we, we work very hard for it. You know, we, we, we do it a lot. A lot in the community, in the, we've been doing a lot. You know, the business we are doing, you know. Someone says, by the grace of God. No, 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 no. You know, we know there's grace, but you know, sometimes you must know some things. They began to pray the gods of gold. Say after me, say, my life is by grace. He said, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. God's cups, God's glasses, they were drinking in it and praising the gods of gold. Matakivali. No fear of God. No fear of God. No fear of God. No fear of God. Next verse. In the same hour, came forth fingers of a man's hand. While they were doing it, God said, eh, eh. A hand came and began to write and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. That means it was not just a hand, it was the full man that came to write. What the king saw was the hand. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote one against the other. His clothes came and he... Uh... <laughs> the king was that sick boy. <laughs> and the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck. Still money, still money, still money. Everything is money. Everything is money. And shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Well, you know this chapter and you know this verse. This is where in verse 11 the queen said, go to verse 11. There's a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, a father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, cardinals, and the soothsayers. Well, Daniel came on the scene. What did Daniel say? I'm going to show it to you three things about Babylon. When you, when, you, when you walk in the system of Babylon, three things. So when Daniel came, go to verse 25. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many tekel ufasin. Many, many tekel ufasin. Many, many tekel ufasin. What is the meaning of many, many tekel of us? Three things. Verse 26. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many. God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. The first thing. You see, you think all is about money. Life is about money. You think life is about gaining things for yourself. Life is about operating a system of Babylon. The first thing is that anything that is gotten without God is numbered. It has expiry. It's numbered. 500 years ago, there was a rich man in the world. Do you know his name? We don't know his name. But in that time, he was popular. His, his days were numbered. He didn't know. His impact was numbered. He didn't know. There are politicians who stayed in this, who were in this country, who made a lot of noise as though they would never come off their seats. Their days were numbered. They did not know. That car that you are worshipping, it's numbered. You don't know. 
Because it came from the flesh. The first thing is that it is numbered. It is numbered. You think that's all? It's numbered. It's numbered. If it doesn't come from God. Oh, in, the, in, in Deuteronomy 33, he says, the eternal God. You see, anything God brings forth is forever. It's eternal. That one, does not, that one is not numbered. You can't number that one. That one is timeless. You can't number anything that comes from God. But if it came from Babylon, if it came from the flesh, it's numbered. Daniel was telling, he said, this was the hundred. He said, Belshazzar, well, you did not fear God. You are numbered. God had numbered that kingdom and finished it. It's numbered. Numbered. When it's not from God, it is numbered. Always remember. That is why we produce results that are pleasing in the sight of God. Why? Because if it is not, it's not pleasing in the sight of God, it is numbered. Oh, look at the rich young ruler. Rich young ruler. Where is he today? He didn't know he was numbered. He didn't know his days were numbered. He had, Bible says, he had great possessions. Not one of the things he had is here today. Not one. Not one. Not a, not a shoe is here today. He didn't know his, his wealth was numbered. Everything was numbered. Many. God had numbered that kingdom and finished it. Next verse. Take hell. Thou art weighed in the balances and thou art fought wanting. Number two. If it is from Babylon, it is from the flesh. It is weighed. And it is found wanting. It, it means it does not hold any weight in God's balances. So you say, oh, you had the most money. Oh, you had the most of this. When we wait in God's balances, we wait in God's balances. It is found wanting. It is found wanting. It's found wanting. It's found wanting. They have money. But when it is weighed in the balances, it is found wanting. Some other person does not have as much, but it goes towards the kingdom. When it is weighed, it holds value in God's sight. Like the might of that widow. It's weighed. Take care. Thou art weighed in the balances. And found wanting. Oh! Belshazzar didn't know that while he was being king, they were weighing him. He didn't know he was being weighed. As we are walking in this world, and we are living in this world, we don't know we are being weighed. We are being weighed. This guy, what does his life represent? It's nothing. He's been weighed. He's been found wanting. Belshazzar went to take God's cup. He started drinking. He didn't know his days had been numbered. He didn't know he had been weighed. The last one. Verse 28. Perez or the Ufasin. He says, thy kingdom is divided and given to the meat and the patients. The third thing you see about what comes out of Babylon is divided. Is divided. Is divided. So that man lived all his life to make some big amount of money. He didn't know when one it was numbered. Number two, it was weighed and found wanting. So it is one million dollar in the bank. Ten years later, it is divided. The uncles have taken some. The aunties have taken some. Everybody has taken some. Everybody, they are fighting. They are killing themselves about it. That thing that he, all his life, he struggled to get, it has been divided. The one that there's no... Um, family member to take, the bank will take. What is life? What is life? Many, many take care of us. It says, numbered, weighed, and divided. It has been numbered it has been weighed. It has been divided. It has been numbered. This thing will end soon. It has been weighed. It doesn't hold any weight. Divided. You will not see it again. Be on your feet. Let's close. You're going to pray. You're going to pray. 
Lord, help me to fear you. Kola basi kataya, kala basi kala basi kataya, kola basi ta kala baya, kola basi ta kala baya. Kose proteke falo na mai. Sobra kadaka. You know, you know, we want to live a life of impact. You see, you want to, you want to live a life of impact. You want to do something that when it is weighed in the balances, God will say, yes, correct. Why do we win souls? Why do we win souls? Why do we win souls? Oh, I'll tell you a story. A story Dr. Musa told me. One of their top, one of their top professors in medical school. One of the top most professors. Those times in school, Dr. Musa said, when he sees, maybe you are a medical student and you are also like a pastor or something or you are preaching, or he will tell you, I'll fail you. And yes, you will fail them. He made some pastors stay two years extra, trying to show them he has power. He never went to church. He spoke against church. He spoke against. When he was on his hospital bed about to die, he sent for Dr. Musa. And he asked Dr. Musa a question. He said, Doc, what's the most important thing in life? And Doc started talking to him about Christ. He said, yes, it's true. I lived all my life without God. Then he said, I used to attend an Anglican church. Go and call my priest to come and pray for me. The priest came, prayed for him. He received Christ. Then he told him, he told Dr. Musa, this is the best thing in my life. Then he died. brothers and sisters I just showed you the true meaning of life find Christ and walk with him lift your hands and pray you search my heart and you know me well you know when I lie when I rise You are familiar With all my ways You know my journey You're mine You search my heart Know me You know when I lie and when I rise. You are familiar with all my ways. You know my journey, your mind. together in my mother's womb my breath and my frame came from you oh what an honor to bear your name 
You woke me together in my mother's womb. A breath and my friend came from you. Oh, one honor to bear your. Invigorated with your life, Aha. I'm grateful, Lord, precious in your sight. I'm grateful, Lord, mindful of me. I'm grateful. Precious in your sight I'm grateful, Lord Mindful of me In your image Was I made For your place In your image was I made for your pleasure, oh I You're my beginning, Lord of my present, you're my forever. Sora makina mastabra karabashi karoso mandele meriante nte. Oh, shikalo sakala makola basi kala ba yende I want you to pray at this point. Pray at this point. Pray the Holy Ghost. Kelo mo sula mante ke bala masada mande. E ya la 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 ba shada da da ba da da ba da da ba shida ba da da ba shada da da ba. Ye ka 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 ya da ba da da ba shi da ba da da ba sha da 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 ba ra ba 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 ka ba ya la ba ka sha la da ba sha da 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 ba ka mo ra ta 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 ra ta 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 ra ta 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 ya ta 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 ya ta 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 ya ta 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 ya ta 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 ra ka 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 ra ta 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 ra pa 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 ra ta 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 ka ra ta 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 
is taking you forward. He's moving us forward. Yes, 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 yes. Do you see it? Do you see it? You've got to see it tonight. God has increased the grace. He has increased the grace. See it tonight. See it. See it. See it. Oh, you will not be small. You will not be small. The, the pastors of the, the churches that come here for midweek, those pastors who come, you will not be small. You will not be small. You will not be small. Mojo kalawa baya. Sola matre kalawa. Kose kala la 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 la. Ola ba 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 ba. Sola ba ba ba. You will not be small. You will not be small. The grace is increased. The grace is increased. Kato kala ba 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 ya. Shalawa kose kete. Increase grace.
level ascend today. Lord eternal, today level, I'm telling you I'm going to lay hands on all of you one by one level has turned today level has turned today level has turned today listen for some of you if it is mistakes you've been, you've been making wisdom can be imparted so ta 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 things are things, things are changing from today. Go ta ka 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 pa 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 pa. So ta 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 ka 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 ka. Ooh, not that you are working with somebody. No no no, your it's your business. Oh to 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 to. Get ready as well. That same grace, that same grace. As you are going back, you'll be speaking in tongues, you'll be saying everything has changed. You'll be saying it, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Everything has changed.
God is sending you help. He's sending you help. He's sending you help. He's sending you help. Sekataka. Stand up. Listen. The guys, when we had the all night, and I laid hands on all of you. Can I have about two people to tell, tell me what happened to them afterward? Yeah, come. What, what, what happened afterwards? Come. There's something about the laying on of hands. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. So, Pastor, when you laid hands on us, we went back to our various houses. Pastor, I was just praying. But before that, I wanted... I wanted um, money for my fees. Pastor, I wanted money for my fees. And I've been praying. Pastor, when you lay down, I was just praying throughout the day and in the afternoon. A man, a client from UK called me and he was like, he wanted me to work for him, uh, do a job for him. And he wanted me to produce the work before Tuesday. And uh, I just, I don't know, but I just told him I was not, um, I, I, I was not, in, that, in the right sense to do the work. And he, said, and he asked why I was not in the right sense. And I told him I, I had to pay my fees. And Pastor, he sent twice of his fees. Just to, twice. And what, what happened to your business afterwards? Pastor, I've been getting clients from everywhere. Pastor, recently, there was this man also from the US. Pastor, I think I shared it. Pastor, I said, the man just paid for um, a program online and the program is worth three thousand dollars he paid, he for, paid it. for it for, you to, for, for me to do it on this analytics he just paid for it he didn't and he he he, he said he promised me a laptop a phone and pastor I, I don't know him from anywhere i just someone recommended me to him and i worked for him and pastor he's he's he he looking for a job for me online and it's not a loan. Yes. He just paid for you. Yes. He just paid for me. Regan, after I laid hands on the, on the guys, what significant thing did you see? Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. So we had the all night on Friday, and then Saturday I had a shoot. We were interviewing a CEO in, in Ghana, and that was the first time meeting him. He entered the studio, he sat down, he turned around, I was like, wow, the space is small. I was like, this is what you are doing in this small space. And the next thing that came out of his mouth was he would like to sponsor the next season everything. Say, I was so surprised. Yes, yesterday we had a conversation. He asked my number. He called me. He was asking me for the plans for the next season, what I need and everything. And you it, sir. Thank you very much. Who else was sponsor? Yeah? What happened? Yes. You were in that meeting? Yes. Please. I laid hands on you? Yes. What happened? Um, so, I think one Sunday around 4 a.m., there was this white man who messaged me on LinkedIn. Um, like he was sort of pressuring me. He was like, "Use the microphone better." Um, he was sort of pressuring me. He was like, "There's this rule I'll be perfect for." And for me personally, I wasn't looking for a job. But then um, he, he kept um, telling me to send him my CV on Skype, which I did. So that was um, Sunday for him. So after church um, that evening, he was like, he sent my um, CV to the client. So I should just make a small video explaining like what I do to him, and then. Um, and so that I can send it to the client. So I, I sent him the video. I was like a bit reluctant because, like I said, I wasn't looking for a job. But then I sent him the video on Wednesday um, after midweek. 
And then on Thursday, um, just like that, no interview, nothing. He said, I should just join the company. They onboarded me. I, I started working on Friday. Even the grace has increased today. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Testimonies, new testimonies, new testimonies, new testimonies. You will testify, you will testify, you will testify. Your testimony will inspire others. New testimonies, new testimonies. Katokaya, ratatatata. You will be an inspiration. Man, talk babaya. those I laid hands on, get a seed. Doesn't matter how small. Get a seed. Get a seed. Doesn't matter how small.
is on fire. Go talk to That seed, eh? you'll be speaking on that seed and then drop it. You speak on that seed and drop it. You drop it. You'll be speaking on that seed. If you're watching me online, in the name of Jesus, stretch your hand towards your device. You do business. I'm not saying you are now going to start, you already have something going on. Stretch out towards your device. Oh, increase grace now. It's inc increased grace now. Moka Takaba. Things have changed. That business will never be the same again. That business will never be the same again. That business will never be the same again. Things will begin to change immediately. Things will begin to change immediately. In the next one month, you will not recognize that business. Matoka Saka. Take it now. Receive it. Receive that grace. You are receiving that grace there now. Botoka Sakataya. The power of God is in their rooms. It's on their devices now. Motaka Yaba. Boras. Kandas. More grace. More grace. More grace. Yes. It is also something. You don't go back and sit there. You go thanking God, rejoicing because you have received something. Lord eternal. Lord eternal. Master. Master. Word in the heaven. in the heaven. Lord your faithful. Lord your Tears of change! Tears of change! Tears of change! 
Yes. We are going to shout three hallelujah. By the third hallelujah, you shout, you blast in tongues. Matakaya. Then you prophesy. Prophesy concerning that business. Make sure you listen to the instructions. You shout, you speak in tongues. Then you prophesy. How do you prophesy? You speak to the business. What's the name of your business? Huh? Quick, quick five hands. So when you finish, you say, quick hand, five hands. I speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are spreading. You are going around the world. Are you seeing? You will shout. You will bless in tongues. Then you prophesy to your business. Are you sure you are here? God is in a hurry to do what you say. They want to shout three hallelujah. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! This is a third one. Praise the Lord! Katakaye! Ratakaba!
show you here. I see it, 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 I see it. Kataya. have changed. I know it's where things have changed. So big, you'll be so influential. Kato kata kayaka. Where's Where's Vivi Gray? Come. You'll be so honored by God. 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 In this country and beyond, you'll be so honored by God. Hallelujah. Yourself. You just read that scripture and take communion by yourself because I say everything has changed. Things have changed. Yes. You will share your testimony. This year, Thanksgiving, you will have a testimony to share. I said, some of you, some of you, it will not be magical. You will just know that you are just seeing the right thing to do about the business. You will just notice that all the while you've been making some mistakes. Some people were stealing from you, you just catch them. 
you will just block some loopholes. That, I mean, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 8. I'll read in the NLT. This is what wisdom does. And God gave me that scripture while we were praying. Before I even started studying it, he said, If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her and she will honor you. The King James says, She will bring thee to honor. God says, I should tell you that He is bringing you to honor. He's bringing you to honor. Yes. Bringing you to honor. Bringing you to honor. Proof of the price that you paid is who we are. Reigning us beyond time and season. Oh, yeah. This was not part of my plan for midweek. You, you can see I closed early. This one, they took my time. I don't say who took it. So I'll be like, I'm blaming the person. He's the boss. Go flow with the boss. Oh, you'll be so blessed. So blessed. So blessed. So blessed. Hallelujah. Bring out your offering, your tithe. Oh boy. I'm so I'm so full. I tell you, Katakaya. I 